Greetings everyone. As always, I would like to start with a brief disclaimer. These videos are meant to help people learn physics. At times, it's meant to provide helpful hints. And at other times, it's meant to take you through the entire problem with hopefully what is a decent explanation so you can solve many others on your own. I try my best not to show the entire answer in any one screen so that the video remains about learning how to solve the problem and is not something simple that can be used as a shortcut to cheat or get ahead. If you're putting up with the sound of my voice, clearly you must want to learn this material. Okay, let's get started. So we're at a rotor ride at a carnival and people are getting pushed against the wall and then the bottom falls out and nobody falls down, everybody's still stuck against the wall. And the question is, how much friction does the wall need so that we don't fall down? So let's break this down. There's the center of this uh, rotor ride and the distance between that and the wall is 4.6 meters. That's the radius. Um, the diameter then would be well, double that. And if you don't worry about the diameter, what, what actually, what's the path traveled? What's, how much distance is traveled? Uh, because we can get velocity equals distance over time. Distance would be two pi r, so two pi r. And that comes out, that's really one revolution, right? And if you, Take that, let's see, velocity equals distance over time, 2 pi times 4.6 meters, and over one revolution, that's the velocity. So for a revolution, they say that there are um, 0.5 revolutions per second. 0.5 revolutions per second. I'm just doing this so I can get rid of revolutions and convert it to seconds. This this was this was the velocity over time, and now th this part is just so that I can get time converted into seconds. And if I do that, I end up with fourteen point four five, and then significant figures of two significant figures because you know, four point six has two significant figures, so we end up with fourteen meters per second. And uh, the quotient really is about static friction. So we know something. We just tried to find out just about anything that we could find out. Now let's think about the wall. If you're pinned against the wall, then the wall is pushing against you. So there's the normal force. Um, Gravity is trying to pull you down into the hole because the bottom fell out. And friction is helping you by pulling you up. So friction is pulling you up. So this is a free body diagram of a human being who is hanging on for dear life. Um, so f of n actually, that's going to equal the, how hard will you get pushed against the wall? That's your inertial path really, or that's equivalent to maybe the radial force. So you can say that f of n has to be equal to how how much force is being applied to spin you around. So the force being applied to spin you around is mv square over r. And what else? So that's that. What else do we know? What other things do we know? We know that the force of friction has to, if we're not falling, if we're standing still, then force of friction sum of all forces in the y direction, we're not moving, we're stuck to the wall, acceleration is zero, we're not moving. So if up is positive, then friction is keeping up and gravity is trying to pull us down, so negative gravity is equal to zero, that's the sum of all the forces and we're not moving, so mass time acceleration is zero. So force of friction is exactly equal to the force of gravity, there's a nice equilibrium there. And uh, now this is fun, force of friction, right? Uh, so that's the coefficient of static friction times normal force. 
forces of friction are dependent on the coefficient of friction and the normal force applied. And force of gravity is just mass times gravity, that's easy. Hey, cool, now we've got a substitution going here. So static coefficient mv square over r, and that's neat, doesn't matter how heavy you are, your mass is irrelevant, has nothing to do. So you could weigh a thousand pounds or you could weigh one pound, it wouldn't matter. And static friction is equal to, let's see what else can we cancel out static friction. Well, we can send that radius to the other side. After that, we could maybe send uh, even the velocity to the other side. And now if we substitute this, gravity is 10 meters per second square. Uh, radius, they already told is 4.6 meters. Uh, velocity, we actually calculate 14 meters per second square and then that will give you 0 0.23. There are no units, all the units go away. Coefficients of friction never have any units, so 0 0.23. And that is the minimum coefficient of static friction so that people will not slip down. That strikes the right balance, there's equilibrium, and you will not fall down. So people said they were pressed against the wall. There's no outward force. Uh, whenever you're in a circle, molecules or people or whatever, objects want to break away at a tangential path, whatever that tangential path is. So what you're feeling, what we're feeling as human beings is our mass, our body's insistence to go in a straight line. That's, and that keeps changing because, you know, the direction keeps changing. So we feel this constant push as if we're pushing down, but it's really our, the direction change in our motion of our body is what leads to the pressing down feeling, I suppose. Uh, no, there is not a real outward force pressing them against the wall. And there's nothing like this pressing them against the wall. There's nothing like this pressing them against, it's just the direction change in the tangential straight line path that all mass wants to follow the direction is changing fast and you just feel like you're pressed up against the wall. Yeah, so what's the source? Inertial path. Uh, inertial path. The need of all mass to follow its inertial path is what the source of that feeling is. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.